The DOJ's announcement of the foiled Iranian terror plot on the Saudi Arabian ambassador to the U.S. comes at a time, as we were just discussing, when Eric Holder has been subpoenaed for the Fast and Furious operation, a scandalous uh, event that put U.S. firearms, military-grade weapons, in the hands of Mexican drug cartels. So what can we make of all this? For big picture analysis, we also turn to former CIA operative and chief of the bin Laden unit, Michael Scheuer. Michael, it's always a pleasure. Uh, welcome back to Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge. Uh, wh why do you think is hyping this so-called threat from Iran? Why do you think it was announced when it was announced? And does any of this make sense to you? Well, I think, first of all, uh, Ms. Miller's description of the operation is, is correct. It's like a Marx Brothers movie, but without the Marx Brothers, just some dummies. They, they uh, I, I think uh, one thing we need to keep in mind is that the performance of the FBI and DOJ in the area of terrorism has been pretty pathetic over the past couple of years. They may have jumped at something because it gave an appearance of, of, of actually uh, being successful, but really, it, it turns out to be just another sting, Judge. Uh, this is another, another uh, uh, counterterrorism operation at the end of the day that lured somebody into running it, apparently. All right. This, so this, I, this is basically uh, a claim by the federal government that it protected us from harm that was never really there and never really threatening us to begin with. But, but well, yet it has, that, it has that added twist, Michael, of involving the, the government of Iran. So let me ask you this. Who would want to that we need to engage in military activity, which a lot of the neocons demanded be before the ink was even dry on this criminal complaint against Iran. Oh, the only people that would benefit from that would be the Israelis and the Saudis. And I think if I was looking at a counterintelligence uh, operation to decide where this information come, came from, I'd be very interested to see if I could find an Israeli hand or a Saudi hand. Because in the long run, Judge, both Israel and Saudi Arabia are much more dangerous enemies to the United States than the Iranians are. The Iranians are a third-rate uh, military power that we could handle very easily. But, you know, the, the Congress is crazy for war with Iran. Listen to Senator Graham and Senator McCain and Joe Lieberman. Um, they're owned by the Israelis. The Saudis are very influential. So when you look at these kind of things, you have to ask, who would benefit from the war? The Israelis and the Saudis would love to see our money and our young men and women being killed to fight their enemies in Iran. All right, you have engaged professionally in counterintelligence to, to enhance the, the security of the United States during much of, of your adult life. Tell me, Michael, could, could this be a case in which the American government, in which the Justice Department was played like a fiddle by foreign entities? It thought it was running the case. It thought it was in control of it. But in reality, these people that, uh, that were involved were not under their control, but were under the control of someone who wanted to foment animosity between Iran and the United States. I, I don't think it's impossible, Judge. I, of course, don't have the information to say that. But when you, when, you look at, when you look at the bottom line, who this benefits, if it leads to military action against uh, Iran, it only benefits the Israelis and, uh, and Saudi Arabia. And there's a precedent for it. We've already fought two wars against Iraq in favor of Israeli interests and Saudi interests. So we're always being pushed to, to get our people killed for their interests. So I think it could happen another time. Why not? Got it. Uh, Michael Scheuer, it's a pleasure, no matter how gloomy these things are that we talk about. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Judge.